Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Welcome to St. Mary Parish as we celebrate the 15th Sunday of Ordinary Time. We come together to be nourished by the Lord. Let us listen to God's Word and receive the Eucharist so they may take root within us and that we may grow in God's grace. Our celebrant for this Mass is Father Dennis Carnero, assisted by Deacon Dan Georgia. Today, let us remember in our prayers Lori Ann Kerrins, Gary Stalling, Mary Beth Santos, and Jeanette Smith on her birthday. In reference for the liturgy, please check that you have silenced your cell phones as we open our hearts to God's grace. And, and please join us in singing our opening song, number 838, Come to the Feast, number 838. Please stand. You sow the seeds of mercy and peace in our hearts. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you patiently wait for us while your word takes root within us. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, your grace strengthens us to share your word with others. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. <laughs>
who show the light of your truth to those who go astray so that they may return to the right path. Give all who for the faith they profess are accounted Christians the grace to reject whatever is contrary to the name of Christ and so to strive after all that does it honor. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, just as from the heavens the rain and snow come down and do not return there till they have watered the earth, making it fertile and fruitful, giving seed to the ones who sows and bread to the ones who eats. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. My word shall not return to me void, but shall do my will, achieving the end for which I sent it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be God.
Spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. On that day, Jesus went out of the house and sat down by the sea. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat down, and the whole crowd stood along the shore. And he spoke to them at length in parables, saying, A sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seed fell on the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky ground where it had little soil. It sprang up at once because the soil was not deep. And when the sun rose, it was scorched, and it withered for lack of roots. Some seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it. But some seed fell on rich soil and produced fruit, a hundred, or sixty, or thirtyfold. Whoever has ears ought to hear. The disciples approached him and said, Why do you speak to them in parables? He said to them in reply, because knowledge of the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven has been granted to you, but to them it has not been granted. To anyone who has, more will be given, and he will grow rich. From anyone who has not, even what he has will be taken away. This is why I speak to them in parables, because they look, but do not see, and hear, but do not listen or understand. Isaiah's prophecy is fulfilled in them, which says, You shall indeed hear, but not understand. You shall indeed look, but never see. Gross is the heart of this people. They will hardly hear with their ears. They have closed their eyes, lest they see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their hearts, and be converted, and I heal them. But blessed are your eyes, because they see, and your ears, because they hear. Amen, I say to you, many prophets and righteous people long to see what you see, but did not see it, and to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. Hear then the parable of the sower. The seed sown on the path is the one who hears the word of the kingdom without understanding it, and the evil one comes and steals away what was sown in his heart. The seed sown on rocky ground is the one who hears the word and receives it at once with joy, but he has no roots and it lasts only for a time. When some tribulation or persecution comes because of the word, he immediately falls away. The seed sown among thorns is the one who hears the word, but then worldly anxiety and the lure of riches choke the word, and it bears no fruit. But the seed sown on rich soil is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields a hundred or sixty or thirtyfold. The Gospel of the Lord. The scripture readings for today teach us through nature. The prophet Isaiah in the first reading talks about the gifts of snow and rain are generously showered upon us so that our land could be nurtured, fed, and as a result, we could have the seeds planted, grown, and we have food and drink to be able to receive through the gifts of God. But the scripture says, they do not return to God unless they have done their duty here on earth. The gospel passage says that Jesus spoke in parables. And the disciples asked him, why do you speak in parables? And then Jesus replied that it is because the gift of scripture 
the gift of God's word is very much reserved for those who have the appetite and the willingness to receive it, digest it and use it. You and I have been baptized Christian Catholics. We have been initiated into the Catholic Church. And as members of the Catholic Church, we are fortunate to receive the Word of God through scripture, through the devotions, but more particularly through the sacrifice of the Eucharist. When we talk about, talk about being nurtured, we see that God gives us the great gift of the Word of God. However, it is for you and me individually to be able to prepare the ground for receiving that seed, the word of God. And therefore, just as nature tells us, there are those seeds that fall on the path, those sweet seeds that fall on rocky ground, those seeds that fall on bushy grounds, all these do not produce any fruit because either they are not yet prepared for it or because they do not want to be prepared for it or to receive it. It is those seed that fall on fertile ground that produce fruit. And you and I as baptized Christian Catholics have the opportunity to be able to have our soil, our hearts, our minds fertile by the teachings of Jesus and the scripture that are given us. Let us today remind ourselves that as Christian Catholics, we have the great ability to be able to receive the word of God, but more than that, receive the word of God willingly and to take trouble to digest the word of God so that the word of God becomes part of our life in all that we say, in all that we do, in all that we are. Let us today remind ourselves that as we hear the scriptures, we understand God's gift to us. But the greatest gift for us is that when we offer the sacrament of the Eucharist at this altar and receive the body and blood of Jesus Christ through the Eucharist, we are receiving the graces and the benefits of God's graces in our Christian Catholic living. Let us stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only God, the Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and he rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is the Lord of the Lord, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God provides for our needs and answers our prayers. Let us service our prayers and needs before the Lord. Our response is, guide us in your ways, O Lord. Guide us in your ways, O Lord. For the church, that we may sow God's word generously and widely, especially to all who need to know God's message of compassion and mercy.
For this we pray. Thy name is in your grace, O Lord. We pray that the nations of the world may readily share the bounty of the earth so that none of God's children go hungry. For this we pray. Thy name is in your grace, O Lord. For all who work to produce the food we eat, from the farm laborers to those who package and transport it, may they be able to feed their families as well. For this we pray. Guide us to your grace, O Lord. We ask the Lord's blessing for people in areas of our nation and in our world who are suffering from drought or flooding, and for those whose water is contaminated or unsafe. For this we pray. Guide us to your grace, O Lord. For our families and our youth, and for our family life throughout our country, may we be strengthened to pray and live the gospel in our homes. For this we pray. May God's blessing bring strength to all who struggle with disease, addictions, mental illness, and sickness. And we ask God's grace on all who care for those that are sick. For this we pray. For our friends and relatives who now rest in eternal life, this week we pray especially for Father Michael Michelini and Father William Finnegan. May they and their families find comfort in the light of Christ's presence. For these we pray. We now quietly bring our own personal prayers, needs, and hopes before God. And for these we pray. Guide us in your grace, O Lord. God of infinite goodness, you know our needs before we even open our lips. We pray that you may answer our prayers, that we may proclaim your good news to all the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Ready, friends, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look upon the offerings of the church, O Lord, as she makes her prayer to you, and grant that, when consumed by those who believe, they may bring ever greater holiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift your hearts to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right, right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder. To rule in your name over all you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works. And so, with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. So that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, o Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. <coughs> the mystery of faith His wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your son and filled with his holy spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, 
and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Blaise, our Bishop, Dan, our Pastor, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed sisters and brothers, and to all who are pleasing to you, at their passing from this life, <coughs> find admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Dear friends, these ministers of care will reach out to those who are not able to join us in our celebration here. Please assure them of your prayers and support. 
the Minister of Care, this community sends you out to those who are not able to join us in our celebration here. Go with our prayers and support and let them know that they are part of our community as we break bread in this church. God bless you and thank you for doing this. Let us stand to pray. Having consumed these gifts, we pray, O Lord, that by our participation in this mystery, its saving effects upon us may grow through Christ our Lord. Amen. Two quick announcements. Attention all in middle school and high school. St. Mary and St. Edna are sponsoring a concert next Sunday, July 23rd, at St. Edna Parish in their parking lot. There will be a Mass for you with Bishop Jeff Grob at 5 p.m., followed by the Christian rock singers, the Scally Brothers, at 6.15. Please see the bulletin for a QR code to sample their music. Father Dan assures us it is very, very good. We hope to see you at this free event. Attention all golfers, get a foursome together and join our annual St. Vincent de Paul Charity Golf Outing on Monday, August 7th. Proceeds of the event benefit our St. Vincent de Paul's outreach ministry to those in need in our area. Information to register for golf and or the dinner gala can be found once again in our bulletin. The Lord be with you. Let's bow our heads and pray for God's blessing. Open our eyes to see your hand at work, O Lord, in the splendor of creation and in the beauty of human life. Help us to share your blessings with others and to experience the joy of life in your presence through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Amen. Thanks be to God. Please join us in singing our closing song, 596. Praise to you, O Christ our Savior, number 596.